guys. Hi. Um, I am in a different setting today, and I don't know if you guys can recognize some of it. This is the back of our classroom. I actually had to go into school today. Um, I had to print some stuff and do a few things that um, I needed access to the classroom in. So um, I'm going to do our read aloud for the chocolate touch in our classroom. Um, I wish you guys were here so I could be reading to you guys in person, but this is the next best thing. Um, we are going to read chapter 11 in our story. And again, just to recap a little bit of chapter 10, um, John had left his friend's party very upset. His father saw him and wanted to know why he was so upset. So John told him what happened and um, pretty much dad didn't believe him and decided maybe we need to go check out the doctor. When John went to the doctor, um, he turned something into chocolate and I cannot remember if it was a tongue depressor or something that was in his mouth. It did turn to chocolate and the doctor thinks he discovered some new sort of disease that he called um, <laughs> cranium's disease after himself. So we are going to continue reading um, chapter 11 and I believe we are almost done with this book. It looks like we only have 10 more pages so let's see what happens. Mrs. Midas was much upset when Mr. Midas told her that John had Dr. Cranium's disease. He said it was chocolateitis, Mr. Midas explained, a worried frown on his face, but he's calling it Cranium's disease because it was his discovery. Dr. Cranium didn't do it, John said. It's magic. It's all started after I ate that chocolate. I'm scared, he added. Mrs. Midas sat down and dabbed her eyes with a lace handkerchief. That's just, um, a handkerchief is um, a reusable tissue. We don't see many people using them nowadays. My father used to use them. She was crying. So we know when we cry, we usually need to use tissues. She was using something called a handkerchief. Mr. Midas blew his nose, said he had to attend to something, and abruptly left the room. John had been so busy feeling sorry for himself that he had not realized how his mother and father would feel about his chocolate disease. Never mind, mother, he said, putting his arm around her shoulders. It's all right. Really, nothing was all right, but he couldn't bear to see his mother's tears. He kissed her wet cheek. His eyes were shut as his lips softly touched her, so he didn't see any change right away. Uh-oh, guys. Then his lips began to feel sticky. He opened his eyes. His mother had turned into a lifeless statue of chocolate. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I would be very happy if I accidentally turned my mother into a chocolate statue. Moms are pretty important. John ran wildly out of the house without thinking where he was going or what he was going to do. All he knew was that somehow he must get help. For the first time in a long while, he forgot about himself altogether. Now he didn't care about anything but bringing his mother back to life. Without quite knowing how he got there, John found himself at the corner where he had bought the chocolate box. The lot was no longer an untidy rubbish dump. The neat red brick building with two show windows was exactly where it had been in the first place but the display of candy he had previously seen in the windows were, was no longer there. In one window, John saw a chocolate trumpet, a chocolate pencil, and a silver dollar with a piece bitten out of it. In the other window, he saw a cafeteria tray littered with chocolate utensils and the remains of a chocolate lunch. Clearly, this place was the right one. Clearly, the propri proprietor must know a lot about John's hateful chocolate touch. John rushed into the store. Prop guys, prop oh my god, I can't even pronounce it right now. Proprietor is another word for like an owner, the person who's running the shop. So the proprietor was standing behind the counter, carefully polishing something small and round and flat and silver. I was just thinking of you, he said. John had no, uh, no time to waste on pleasantries. Remember the old 
coin I found and gave you, and you gave me a magic chocolate, he demanded. Without waiting for a reply, he babbled on. I ate it, and it made everything that touches my mouth turn to chocolate. And I kissed my mother, and now she's turned to chocolate, and I've got to change... Sorry, guys. Her back. Easy now, murmured the storekeeper. Calm yourself. There was an expression of satisfaction in the old man's eyes. It's all your fault, John declared. If my mother isn't made better again, I'll fight you till you're dead. Whoa. My goodness, the storekeeper exclaimed. Whose fault, did you say? Yours, John said. If you hadn't taken that money, I wouldn't have... Now, John, the storekeeper inter interrupted. I must insist on honesty. I'm glad to hear that you're thinking about your mother for a change. Unselfishness is important. But honesty is also important. It'll be truthful, perhaps. If you'll be truthful, perhaps I can help you. John's ears reddened. It had become unmistakably evident to him that he had only himself to blame for all this unhappiness. He looked straight into the storekeeper's eyes. I'll do anything. I'll work for you all my life. For nothing. Excuse me. If you'll turn my mother back. You can turn me into to chocolate instead if you want. You. The storekeeper. Now you guys can see the picture. The storekeeper apparently ignores John's offers. You were right, John, he said. When you guessed that I had something to do with you, you're acquiring the chocolate touch. But you yourself earned the coin that bought the chocolate touch. Only greedy people can even see that kind of money. Dr. Cranium was, was right up to a point. I suppose that one could say that you had chocolate-itis. But it was just an outward sign of selfishness. My mother, John reminded the storekeeper frantically. My mother turned to chocolate. Do something about it. Oh, please do something about it. I'm glad that you are concerned, the storekeeper commented unhurriedly. Part of your cure is to be concerned about other people. You have been so greedy that you didn't care what happened to other people. Oh, I know, I know, John admitted woefully. But please decide about me later, and please make my mother better now. Well, John, the storekeeper said, if you had to choose between getting rid of your chocolate touch and restoring your mother to life, which would it be? For one moment, John couldn't imagine a future of all chocolate meals. The thought was terrible, but then he thought of his mother as he had been when he had left her. A motionless chocolate statue, unable to speak, her chocolate hand still holding her lace handkerchief. Without further hesitation, John said, Help my mother. Well, John, the storekeeper said, I'm going to give you another chance. When next you go to school, your chocolate pencil will be a real wooden pencil with lead in it. But, John began to protest, what did the pencil matter? The chocolate knife and fork and spoon you left on your tray in the cafeteria will have turned back to metal. Your chocolate trumpet will be a shiny golden one again. But, John said, don't worry about Dr. Cranium's spoon. He will find a whole silver one on the floor where the broken chocolate one lay. But how about, John said, Susan Buttercup will discover that the chocolate stains on her party dress and her party shoes were nothing but water after all. Her silver dollar will be all right. John couldn't, could not, could, John could stand the suspense no longer. My mother, he shouted, what about my mother? Will she be all right? The storekeeper smiled. Why don't you run along home and find out, he suggested. John turned without even saying goodbye and ran out of the store. The storekeeper went back to the disc that he had been polishing, a disc the size of a quarter. It had been polished smooth, ready for a new set of initials in case the need for them should arise. 
And that is the end of chapter 11. So what do you guys think will happen? Do you think when John gets home, his mother will be back to normal? Or do you think she's going to stay a chocolate statue? Do you guys think that John learned his lesson to be less selfish and to think about other people and how he's affecting others? Um, you guys are really good about always being concerned about other people, but sometimes um, not everybody does that. And John in our story is learning a very good lesson that sometimes people and other people's feelings are more um, important than just your own. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the book. I think we only have one, maybe two more chapters left, depending on um, how short they are. But um, I hope to read to you guys again tomorrow. And have a wonderful day. Bye!